Today, I'm encouraging everybody to be prepared for the unexpected, because we are at a, tra a time, a transition in terms of what is happening across the world, that we really need to be prepared as individuals and as families. It's coincidental that we have recently done our Disease X. This is Are You Prepared? We put together this book, and this is a very, very important document here that we've got. And what we've done is that we've covered as many areas as we could in the context of the lessons learned from COVID. And in this, we also built it in a way that it has fascinating stories. And I'll be taking you through some of those stories in just a minute. But before that, people may say, well, isn't COVID over? Is there any concern now for the future? Well, I'm going to present to you some information that has recently come up just, and it was seen on Twitter, it was published in different parts. And this is in relation to Tulsi Gabbard. Who is she? And so you can see that this is the BBC News. And this here is talking about Tulsi Gabbard, who is likely to be Donald Trump's intelligence pick, meaning that she will be most likely the director of national intelligence. She was a former Democratic Congresswoman and joined the Republican Party. So why is it so important what she is saying? Well, for one, she's likely to be in the know as to what is going on. And here is her giving her views as to exactly what needs to be happening in the context of where we are today. Let's hope you can hear these words because this is exceptionally important for everybody to consider the implications for them and for their loved ones. Listen to what she has to say here. Here are the undeniable facts. There are 25 to 30 U.S. funded bio labs in Ukraine. According to the U.S. government, these bio labs are conducting research on dangerous pathogens. Ukraine is in an active war zone with widespread bombing, artillery and shelling. And these facilities, even in the best of circumstances, could easily be compromised and release these deadly pathogens. Now, like COVID, these pathogens know no borders. If they are inadvertently or purposely breached or compromised, they will quickly spread all throughout Europe, the United States, and the rest of the world, causing untold suffering and death. So in order to protect the American people, the people of Europe, the people around the world, these labs need to be shut down immediately, and the pathogens that they hold need to be destroyed. Instead of trying to cover this up, the Biden-Harris administration needs to work with Russia, Ukraine, NATO, the UN to immediately implement a ceasefire for all military action in the vicinity of these labs until they're secured and these pathogens are destroyed. Now, in addition to all this, the U.S. funds around 300 biolabs around the world who are engaging in dangerous research, including gain of function, similar to the lab in Wuhan, where COVID-19 may have originated from. Now, after realizing how dangerous and vulnerable these labs are, they should have all been shut down two years ago, but they haven't. Now, this is not a partisan political issue. The administration and Congress need to act now for the health and well-being of every American and every person on this planet. Here so are the undeniable a very important message. And as I said, that is coming from the person who could potentially be the lead for the director of intelligence in the United States. So for her to say that, you know this has got to be serious. And this is what I'm saying is that she used the word may have originated. And this, can you believe, four years down the line, and this is still being, this has not been conclusively clarified. We are in a situation where we have seen, over the past four years, a virus like we have never seen before. This, as I said, for anybody who is involved in research, the capabilities of this virus, SARS-CoV-2, are beyond anything we have ever seen. And it's not over yet. This is part of the problem. It's still circulating. 
even though people may want to say, well, it's not as bad. I keep warning people that just because the initial symptoms are not as severe doesn't mean that the virus is not doing serious damage underneath. This is the reality of what we're facing. Ongoing circulation without any clear solution, public health silent, WHO seems to largely be silent, nobody seems to care, people are getting sick, excess mortality is up, all of these things combined indicate that we are on the brink of a disaster. And so this is why, as I said, we've spent many, many months preparing for this. Our Kickstarter supporters have helped us to launch this. We've sent out the first draft of the ebook to them. And if you want to be involved in terms of this process, please click on the link in the description below you can then get first access to the pandemic preparedness insights from this. Because essentially, we have taken the insights on COVID in order to understand what was going on. Here is where, if you click on this, well, first, I assume you would put in your email and it's free. You're not buying anything. It's just a pre-order for when it's launched. But when you click on this link here, you will get a short version of the story. And this is the uncomfortable truth. Now, this is a narrative. It's fictional. But the point is, is that we have used the story to therefore build ideas about the reality of what happened in the pandemic. Just to give you a taste of it, here is a short video about that little story, just so that you understand what we're trying to do. I'm diving into some eye-opening revelations from Dr. Elena Rostropovich a renowned immunologist who recently shook the scientific community with her latest findings. Picture this. Dr. Rostropovich is at her desk, her mind heavy with the latest research papers. The stakes are high as she prepares for her address at the World Health Summit, discussing the long-term impacts of the global vaccination campaign. Now let's rewind a bit. Remember the early days of the vaccine rollout. The promise of ending the pandemic was so strong that many potential red flags were overlooked. Fast forward to today, and the consequences are both disturbing and stark. She also compares natural immunity to vaccine-induced immunity, stating that natural immunity provides more robust and durable protection against reinfection and severe disease. This statement sparks heated debates, with some praising her bravery, and others accusing her of fueling vaccine hesitancy. Dr. Rostropovich concludes with a powerful message. We must learn from this experience and ensure that the urgency of a crisis doesn't override the need for thorough, long-term safety studies. Her thought-provoking speech prompts many researchers to reassess the data, leading to a renewed commitment to safer and more effective strategies for future pandemics, including the looming threat of disease X. So yes, and that's just a capture, a little bit of that story. So what we have done is that essentially we have taken the COVID pandemic and built a story around it. And the style of the narrative is easygoing. It's not like a textbook. So it's story like with fictional stories built into real world understanding about COVID. Because you have to understand something. In order to get another virus like SARS-CoV-2, <laughs> to have that capability that this virus did, because you have to remember, it was able to spread before people had symptoms. That's why it can't be easily controlled, because you don't know who is sick. And that is really one of the most incredible characteristics about this virus. And then it triggered a cytokine storm in some people. It seemed to target the elderly, people with comorbidities. It was remarkable. It didn't really target neonates. I mean, this is something that I cannot even imagine how nature would have come up with it. So the reality 
is that when we think about the situation with biolabs and so on that are in existent, and somebody pointed out, which I think is important, that statement from Tulsi Gabbard could have been from 2022, quite possibly, but it is still as relevant today as it was then, because the issues have not been resolved. We are now in a situation where potentially with over 300 biolabs across the world dealing with dangerous pathogens, what happens if there is accidental or inadvertent release of something else? Are you prepared? This is the point, be prepared. Because it's only when you are prepared that you at least have a chance about what this is more than just about what happens in terms of you facing the virus it's about what happens in terms of your overall health your overall immune system that's the characteristic that really really needs to be strengthened everybody should take this seriously because at the moment it seems that the world has been lulled into a false sense of security there is no doubt that even though COVID is less serious than it was, with excess deaths being high, there is no guarantee that this trend will not continue for a number of years. So COVID is just one of the problems. And one of the things that people don't realize is just how vulnerable COVID makes you to other viral infections and bacterial ones, especially things like mycoplasma and streptococcus, because the virus suppresses interferon, a critical warning signal that helps your immune system to prepare and fight against any virus and some bacterial infections. That alone is probably one of the most serious things we could face as a world when we have issues with influenza circulating as well. It means that any virus that has the capacity to infect a lot of people will suddenly break through because so many people's immune system has been depressed by COVID-19. The saddest part is that when someone is infected, that immune suppression in terms of damage to the lymphocytes, the natural killer cells, can last in some cases for weeks to months. Those people are vulnerable and don't even know they're vulnerable. That is how serious this is. As I said, all we can do is try and find solutions. And so in that sense, I am saying that please, at least consider get on the um, get on the link take a look there is no commitment in that sense when you have to go there you can just link that you are interested when we have this out hopefully within the next few weeks to a month sign up put in your subscription you will also sign up for a newsletter you'll get a preview of disease x see the style of the writing and hope that you support us in this very, very important bit of information. We're hoping to help people to understand why some of the things worked in the past. How is it that they can be combined? Why is it that we don't have more solutions than we need today? So, as I said, we are in challenging times, and there is no doubt that with the ongoing situation in Ukraine, the whole world is at risk. Let's hope for peace, but more importantly, let's be prepared that even if the worst should happen, we stand a fighting chance for the future. Join us in this journey. Disease X, be prepared.